All right, great. Um, I'm gonna let everybody into the party room. So it's still okay. We All are right. Live now. Yes, and hi everyone. Welcome to our first birthday party. As you hi. come in, the room might be muted. Uh, Hello. But come on in. We're expecting a big room today. Get your drinks. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi, as you come in, if I can't mute everyone, can you just hit mute? We are a huge room today. So it would help if Paul and I were the only ones not on mute, but use chat to chat with us. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Yes, we are putting the room on mute so that, you know, we uh, don't have echoes and noise, but we will certainly, you know, uh, say hello to you at some point. So don't worry. Hey, Sabrina, welcome. We're so excited to have you as well. So for the uh, first bit, we're just waiting for everybody to come into the party. As usual, you know, we will be walking around if we're in a party, holding on to our wine glasses, or for some of you, it might be just your coffee cup. I it's know it's my early. morning tea, yeah. It's my morning <laughs> yeah, now, yeah. But... So uh, if uh, Suita can spotlight my table, uh, you know, just get ready a few items uh, other than your coffee, of course. You know, uh, start with a few loose pieces of paper. Okay, because we are going to start with that. Uh, scissors, all your drawing materials, uh, glue, okay, and, and your watercolor. If it's you know really dry, please mess them down. Today we are playing with you know quite a few drawing painting toys. So you know bring whatever you are comfortable with. So start with uh, loose pieces of paper and a sketchbook maybe uh, below for the second half. And that's really all we need also, today. Yeah, also remember today's a party. We're doing fun stuff. So you have fun art supplies you want to play with. Go bring them. Today is a really good day to bring those fun supplies yeah. that either you love and don't use in your serious work or have never played with. Anything goes. So go get it. And water yeah. and maybe paper towel because we may be making yes. a mess. Yeah. <laughs> So welcome everybody. So a couple more minutes before we start uh, our party. Uh, so get all your art supply, a few pieces of loose paper, you know, come and join us. Uh, it's very casual, nothing very serious. And those friends joining us on YouTube, uh, feel free to also, you know, type in if you have a question or comment for us. Uh, we are more than happy to uh, also answer your questions as well. Great. So I see, I see party hats. I see people here at what would be all kinds of times of the day. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's pretty incredible that we are at one year into this. Yeah. And we have right now, I, I see three screens full of people, um, which might be about all we can hold, but we have a lot more that are joining us on YouTube live. Uh, because some of us are in the room in Zoom and some of us are on YouTube. Paul, Paul, you'll be minding and chatting on yes. YouTube too, right? Yeah. So Paul can yes. do that. So because we're yeah. such a huge room, it really helps if you can mute and if you can use chat so that we can actually make it through the hour um, and hear ourselves. So, all right. You want to jump in, Paul? Yeah, so welcome to um, our blog party and it's our first birthday and, you know, we're really excited that, you know, you're here to celebrate uh, this uh, party with us. Uh, if you're new, big welcome to Sketching Play Lab. This is a sketch this is a playground for Sketcher that we started a year ago and we'll tell you a little bit more about it as well. So before we uh, uh, show you some slides, again, get your art supply so that, you know, you don't have to uh, miss anything. You won't be running around. Okay, so... Let and just a quick for for anybody that's saying where is the youtube channel go to youtube and search paul wang you'll see yes. he's live right now so if you didn't if somebody cannot make it into the zoom room or you know somebody that's out there just search paul wang it's it's streaming live on his youtube channel and also um if you're wondering you know do you need paint yes you, you can bring in your watercolor uh, anything you're comfortable with. I've got my Posca markers, my crayons, you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to have, you know, a variety of toys to play with. And also start with a few loose pieces of paper. Okay. So, uh, wow. Uh, thank you, Sharon, for coming. She's uh, calling in from New Zealand, 2.30 a.m. Wow. in the morning. Wow. That, that's a wow. trooper. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I was <laughs> complaining about 7.30 a.m., but you're doing 2.30. I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome. 
So what I'm going to do right now is to pull up my slides so that we can see what's the party program. There we go, we see it now. Yay. So welcome to a fantastical uh, tea party that we're throwing you uh, because a lot of us you know, are now family and family of uh, Sketching Play Lab. And we're so glad that uh, you can join us today. So a party program, of course, we need a party program for our blog party. Uh, we are going to shortly talk about, you know, why Sketching Play Lab, you know, how we started and why. And also we want to talk a little bit about, you know, what is Play Lab and Sketch. And hopefully you can also experience it in a tangible way. Uh, we are also going to go do some creative uh, somersaults uh, with you. You might be wondering what kind of somersaults in, uh, this early in the morning <laughs> or night. Don't worry, you will find out very soon. And lastly, you know, we'll share with you uh, our hopes and dreams, uh, what's next as well. So along the way, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. We'll collect them and we hope to answer them along the way as well. Sweeta, do you have anything to add to our No, Oh, it's, it's exciting to be doing this one year later and... Um, you might realize from today's program as we go through it that we seem to get crazier and crazier as we go along. So hopefully those of you that have been doing Play Lab with us for a year, uh, you'll, be, you'll be happy to or willing to at least do our creative somersaults. But we'll talk a little bit along the way about our process and journey too. So yeah, take it away, Paul. Okay. So uh, if you have been coming to Sketching Play Lab, uh, you may remember you know, the 10 sessions that we've been running so far. If you are new, uh, what happened last year or the last you know, 12 months, we've been running different play sessions, different theme play sessions. We started with play with lines, you know, we went to uh, you know, make our lines uh, freer, and then we played with unconventional tools. So you may see, uh, play sessions called Break and Build, what's that? Later you'll see Sweden talking a little bit more about it. And uh, you know, the last one that we just finished is called Painted Textures. And each one of them is uh, it's really a play session revolving around a concept and we tend to push it as far as we can. And we uh, play with it, uh, we give you prompts and then we take you on a journey as well, on an adventure, right Sweden? Yeah, that's right. And a little bit um, about these sessions, if you've been to them and you're looking at them now as the collection. So yes, it's always theme based uh, about, a, it's a small concept, but we really push it for about an hour and a half and see what we can get out of the concept. If you've been to a session, you might also see we never use, um, you know, academic art terms, what we're trying to do is make you realize that like this is part of, these are things you know, these are in your everyday experience. For example, when we did pack your bags, we didn't talk about docs and we didn't talk about values and things like that. We talk about pushing color and pulling color, making things go forward and back. So we're always looking to take what would be a stiff and, you know, sort of art concept that you feel you have to learn academically and break it apart and bring it to you in ways that are just ordinary language. So always one concept, always go crazy with it. Thanks, yep. Paul. So um, the next one that's coming up uh, that we are running, rerunning actually, is called Shifting Views. So look out for that announcement of our play session, you know, uh, two weeks after this blog party as well. And you can see we are constantly coming up with new ideas. So we'd love to hear from you as well, what you like to play with. So um, we also tabulated, you know, some facts and figures, and we do want to show you, and also as a way to say thank you as well. Uh, we started our first play session on the 28th of April, 2020. Um, I think around when most of us went into uh, the lockdown. That's and right, Paul. Some... I think about a month before, right, we started talking about this idea. Yeah, about, right. about, about March end, you said, shall we do this? And we said, yeah. And then we spent a month formulating that first one. Yeah. Um, and it, it's it's exciting that you know we're still playing today uh, yeah, almost an yeah. hour uh, a year later as well as some of you might be involved in the first play session i hope you know you still remember what happened uh, and in a total we ran 74 play sessions and when we look at this number it's crazy it's you know yes. uh, yeah, yeah we cannot imagine running 74 workshops you know over 12 months as well uh, it's because you know you really wanted to play you know and you know that's exciting for us right Sweeter. 
Yeah, it's been, it, it didn't feel like that, but looking at the numbers now was quite staggering. Yeah. And we also ran seven block parties. So including this one, we ran seven block parties so far. So it's almost, you know, one block party, you know, every two or three months where we hang out together like this, let our hair down and just, you know, laugh and chat. And of course we sketch. And we have also done two, uh, one YouTube live and one uh, Instagram live sessions, mm -hmm. you know, drawing and sketching and talking about, you know, our own creative process as well. And they are on YouTube and our Instagram uh, account. So you can check them out and, you know, uh, relive you know, those uh, sessions with us as well. Anything to add, Suita? No, that's, it's quite uh, amazing to look at the numbers like that. Because when we were doing it, we were doing it week by week. We were yeah. doing the next one, getting excited about the next Play Lab. So it's quite fantastic to see it come together. Yeah, like and we didn't know what, 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 what we, uh, what's the end goal really, to know, because we know when we started, we just took it one day at a time or, you know, one play session. Yeah, so we're time. approaching our 100th hundred, hundred <laughs> event very soon, right? Yeah. We're in the... 80s now with our events so yeah, yeah looking forward to it so these are some pictures from our previous block parties where you know uh, we invited special friends to join us to also share with us how they play what do they play with you know and what inspires them so you can see Liz still uh, Shari and the last guest that we had was our friend Me Nishan too. sneaky yeah. artist uh, sneaky yeah sneaky artist so uh, you can also check them, uh, check our uh, blog party uh, videos on my YouTube channel and, you know, rewatch them and try some of the fun things that we did as well. Uh, do you have any uh, special memories of the blog parties? Oh gosh, no, they were all fun in their own way. I remember the one with Liz Steele. So if anybody wants a <laughs> tour of Liz Steele's really old sketchbooks from when she was a teenager, there wow. in our blog party, she showed books that she started out her journey with and then Shari um, ex like actually did two demos two completely separate demos in a uh, gouache which is a new medium also really exciting so they're all embedded in those parties it was amazing how much our guests shared of what they do and uh, sneaky artist he talked about his podcast which I hope you follow they're fantastic he talks to an urban sketcher on every podcast and dives really deep and he also did a drawing demo in his very linear style so it's sort of like getting three demos embedded this time you just get Paul and me because we're doing <laughs> yeah. our first anniversary yeah you know, okay. lots, of memories, lots of memories and a whole room like this so um this uh pictures or sketches from our last three months of play sessions and we wanted to uh, theme the first quarter or the first three months uh, called starting again because you know often when we start a year we think about oh how am I going to get through this uh, what should I start the year with you know and what kind of if you do make resolution what do you want to achieve or hope to achieve so we thought maybe we can start with uh, looking closely. Do you remember anything, Suita, from looking closely sessions? So, so looking closely is interesting because I think it was our most, um, so every session is completely different, but I felt like this one particularly made you slow down to a glacial pace, right? Sometimes <laughs> we were looking at one lemon for an hour and a half. That's all. You don't change subjects. You stay right there. And you have to find the new ways to look at it, um, which for some people went with their pace or what they do. For me, that one was a stretch to look at an inch and a half long object for one and a half hours. So yeah. it really made you look closely. I, I So this is I, the actual sketchbook uh, of Suita looking at a lemon. For yes, on the one, bottom an left. Half. Uh, bottom yeah. left yeah and it, it, in the beginning like all experiments it's it's a struggle and it, it takes a while to get into it but I, I really enjoyed that it was a good start to the year let's say yeah and then you can also see our rerun of free your lines is a session that we love because it brings us back to the fundamentals of drawing but drawing you know with freedom uh, mm -hmm. drawing with abandonment and also drawing with uh, you know play and fun in mind as well right you can see Suita you know she has a distinct marks you know, on paper and you know all of us you know can make you know free lines if I you think we out. all have all have a particular mark but it's interesting to see it like this in free your line because uh, 
you don't think about the marks you make and then you see a page full of you running crazy and you see, wow, I do have a signature mark or I can recognize my mark. Like I look at yours and mine on the page next to each other yeah. and I would recognize those marks anyway. I wouldn't know it's yours, but I don't think about it often. Yeah, and also we do re uh, like to remind you that during these play labs, um, sometimes what we do can be extreme. So this is, you know, how far we can push the lines or the colors or the looking but when, you know, when we do go out for urban sketching on our daily, uh, you know, own drawing journeys, we, we do pull back a little bit, but we know how how, uh, how loud we can go, how soft <laughs> we can go as well, isn't it, Suida? Yes, sometimes, I, and sometimes we don't. I, sometimes <laughs> I have no modulation in my work, but that's okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we are going to talk about warm up because it is a really significant or key uh, idea that we do, you know, as sketching play. And we would love to talk a little bit more about, you know, why sketching play lab. And you can, uh, you know, you know, ask us any question if you have as well. So let me just jump out. So Swita, you want to talk about warm up? Yes, warm up is one of those things that like many of us forget, right, especially in this year that we may not be drawing every day, maybe we just jump on a session once in a while, or we're kind of rusty and don't go out often. Um, it's kind of odd the idea that we think that after a year, say, of not being outside, you can step outside with your sketchbook and make a grand sketch. Not going to happen. I mean, you never start a run without warming up. You never... You start a yoga session with a warm up. You start everything with a warm up. So we want to talk a little bit about warm up because it's integral to our process, but also really it just gets your mind there. So today, I want you to pull out your supplies while we chat because you know, uh, doodling and just making your hand move is probably one of the easiest ways to warm up. So any anything rough paper you're working on and your supplies and make marks. And really there's nothing more to it except the fact that you are here for a one year party. You are here to play with your supplies and make marks. So to me, it's it's gonna be difficult to be, you know, quiet and modulated like Paul said today, cause it's a one year party. So I think everything I do today is going to be over the top, loud, fun. So I have my crayons, I have my watercolors, I have whatever. And just, just build a whatever while we're talking until we jump into our first exercise. Because what you want to do is get all your supplies down to your desk, have made yeah. that first mess so that you're not later jumping on to say blank paper or white paper and trying to please so you can see Paul has a random something right growing on his desk so go ahead and start something and build it and you know what if it's on loose paper that's great because we will there's there's a use to all of this later so go ahead and warm up but without any sort of idea that it becomes something if you've been to enough of our play sessions um, you know most of these they, they aren't meant to become something or end up somewhere. So just- yeah, And also if you have a favorite warm-up from our sketching play lab sessions, you can also use them. That's right. Uh, like one of my favorite is taking yeah. my line for a walk. So mm -hmm. if you have a bunch of tools, take everything for a walk today or splash yeah. everything down today. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, the easiest warm-up is maybe just to sharpen your pencil or yeah. un unwrapped your crayon that can you know get you warmed up as well because then you're looking at color you're touching something uh, that you might you know get you excited as well so don't belittle the very small ritual of opening your sketchbook you know sharpening your pants or you know and you know pull out the ink you never know yeah, and also smush those supplies down if they're new and you're being really careful. If you use the side of a crayon or press down hard on a pencil and make like the marks of a child, that's a quick way to jump in. So whatever it takes to start warming up as we yeah. jump into our first. So little... maybe, yeah, so let's maybe talk a little bit about why sketching play lab. So Sweeta, do you remember why we started sketching play lab? Gosh, the, the easiest answer for me is that one day you messaged me and said, hey, want to do this? Uh, but that's the quick answer. Uh, so, yeah, Paul and I have actually been um, meeting uh, at various symposiums for years. And we do get a little time each year to sort of sit together and 
play or draw together at a session. But um, in the beginning of COVID, it, it became especially important that uh, sort of obvious to us that that idea, that sort of play uh, was going to be a big part of what was needed to go through a year where who knows what was coming up, right? So uh, yeah. we did have some ideas in mind or some thoughts where we thought about why we want to call this sketching play lab and what it's about, right? So you want to talk a little bit, Paul, about... Yeah, and, and I guess people uh, were also struggling, you know, staying at home, drawing that same window view over and over again. Mm -hmm. We wanted... Uh, you know, to create a way, a platform to uh, be of inspiration, be of help, you know, to say that, hey, you know, you we can maybe pivot and do some sideway thinking, meander around what seems to be an obstacle, not being able to go out um, and still practice, you know, sketching and playing in a fresh and fun way as well. And you often also hear us, you know, talking about, you know, permission to Play because you know when we are locked in you know we forget that you know within our four walls on our table there's still a lot of things that we can play with so I think that was an impetus to support sure. um, people stuck at home and also allow us to continue to create connection because I think most of us uh, um, at least for myself and Sweden we stopped traveling for a whole that's year right. that's right we, just at the beginning of when the travel season would be yeah, starting we so we had plans we had workshops you know to connect with you but we couldn't so we wanted to create an alternative platform to create connection with all of you uh, and that and was a challenge, right, Paul? Because, I mean, we are amazingly in Zoom and this year has felt like we have met you all. We have been in a room with you. So yeah. that, that really takes, um, it's a challenge to take a medium like Zoom and feel like we do a year later. Yeah. Like, I look at faces here. I'm scrolling through my three screens of people here on on uh, Zoom. And I feel like, hey, we've, we've met many times this year. So that, that's been... Yeah. Um, yeah. It's been great for us. Yeah, and also we told ourselves we didn't want it to be a formal uh, classroom workshop like an environment. We want it mm -hmm. to be fun, like children running, you know, whatever, however they want to play. We wanted that to happen as well, virtually using our sketchbook, simple materials that we have at home <laughs> as well. And actually, if you've been in these rooms enough with Paul and me, you know, we'll always talk about permission to play, right? Yes. Paul starts a session with permission to play in case you didn't know you had it. Um, and then we talk about the fact that it's always a work in progress. We're not here to make finished pieces. And then sometimes we're leading you in blind. Uh, and you just go with it. We're throwing prompt yeah. after prompt. Nobody in the room knows what we're doing or where we're going. Uh, and it's been incredible that you've been willing to come to these sessions where we tell you nothing about it and just follow along. So thank you for being part of this experiment. It has been one grand experiment. It's been a lot it of It is. Work, it has been. It's also been a lot of fun. It's been work and fun. Uh, but we couldn't have done it without so many of you willing um, to come along. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I think Suda, you do remember you know, the, the, the kind of questions that we got from people in the beginning, like, what are you doing? Uh, and <laughs> people thought they are coming to watch us perform uh, uh, and, you know, do a song and dance for them. But I think quick, if quick, very quickly, people understood that it was beyond a workshop. It was, uh, and some of you can chime in and type, you know, what, what uh, you thought about us and you know what she yeah what, what did you think in those initial sessions i know you were all really polite and nobody said these two are crazy but we'd love if you remember things from early on or how it was or how it's more for you um anything <laughs> yeah so Suita, what happens you know typically in a play session do you want to tell the group sure so you know even though it seems like a crazy hour and a half and every time different we do have a structure that um, a very loose structure that we like to follow because the things we believe in uh, the idea say I'm sorry I can't turn my cat off so if he's really loud um, that's mm -hmm. one sound I can't turn up um, we have a structure we play with actually and um, it's th three P's actually there is the prep which is the prompt we start with, we start, sorry, the prep is the intro. We introduce ourselves. We say hello. Now in a party, we're too, too big a room to go around and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, which is why we say, 
uh, talk and chat, but we usually start with an introduction so we feel we're in one space together. We get some input from you. We'll ask, often ask you a question which seems random, like last time we asked, give us a textural sound or a textural word, and you didn't know where you were going, but we collect input from you. And we also do a warm up. So that's our prep, our first part of every session. Then we have prompts. The whole session, we never like to call it directed like a workshop. It doesn't have a must do, but we like to feel we're throwing prompts at you and you're responding. And we're, it's a back and forth. It's, it's, and, then, and then, of course, there is the third section, which is you're warmed up. We've thrown you a bunch of prompts. You have collected a good mess of stuff on your sketchbook, and then you play with it, and you start the seed of something. So the three Ps are the prep, the prompt, and the play is what makes yeah. every session. So all we are doing is to help you, you know, keep the ball rolling, really. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we're just your, your cheerleader, but, you know, you are the one really doing the work. Itself. And also we um, put everybody in the same room. So often you'll find that, you know, we, we have, you know, people who might be new to sketching and people who are be professional, but we all can play together in this uh, playground. That's a very unique feature as well. And there's so much that we can learn from each other, isn't it? Yeah, that's, it's been a big part of what we do. In fact, it might be time to show, share some ideas of a play pool. Or ah, so maybe we I can share one more uh, thing that we yeah. how we actually come up with the play session as well. Go for so, it. so now that you've heard a little bit about why we started and you know what happens, I hope you know it's piqued your interest. Uh, you will come and join us again, and we are constantly you know uh, looking out for new ideas. So for some of us who joined us for the you know uh, last session called painter texture, um, we incubated this for quite a while. And it was also mm -hmm. a continuation from the drawn texture. So the top left corner, you may see uh, a sketch by Sweeta. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that sketch, Sweeta? Gosh, so this one came, this, this appeared in my sketchbook. I rarely do um, stuff that's not directly from life or not lifelike. But this one happened at the end of drawn textures, I think. And it, it was in my sketchbook. And this is what Paul and I often do. Uh, Behind every session we run are maybe eight, nine, ten sessions in which we've sat together here on Zoom for two hours. Sometimes we've gone to three hours. Yeah. Uh, looking through our books, then finding something, running with it, often dead ending, coming back the next day, finding something else. So there's lots of those are gone. And Paul noticed that in my book and, he, and we talked about it. And then we talked about how that came out of the first session and then that morphed into the idea of drawn textures becoming painted textures and sometimes when you look at these things you don't see the leap because there were hours in between but that idea of making texture on your page it's been very appealing especially this year so um, yeah and also we have failed experiments as well so oh gosh, you, lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think for some of us you know you are also doing this at your own time so um, yeah, feel free to share with us how you start to you know be inspired to think about more ideas. So one idea often leads to the next, and then mm -hmm. the next picture we like to show you is what we're doing currently. Again, you can see that you know there's a lot of back and forth. Um, I ask Sweeta a question, and then you know she'll tell me her viewpoint, and then I try it. So you know that is how you know often play helps us. Sure. Uh, so actually, that's an interesting view. That's from last week, and that's. That's our dirty, messy sessions. And it looks like nothing at this point, right? We have five black papers. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, hopefully it'll grow into a session. So that's a sneak peek at the hours and hours that start off a play lab. Uh, yeah. Great fun. So now do. we're going to talk about play. And right. before we jump out, you know, if you remember this YouTube live session that we did, it's still on my channel. You can rewatch it. I know we had a picture a photograph of a tea shop in uh, Yangon. And then both of us did it our own way. We uh, we warmed up and then we, we showed you two ways of you know, looking at the same photo. Do you remember anything about this way? Yeah, so, uh, you know, this was an experimental one for us because we were looking at a photograph together. Usually you're drawing things at our desk. Um, 
And it was interesting because we wondered, we've all been sat in the same place together in um, say a symposium and drawn yeah. together. And we do end up with two very different, uh, very different pieces on our paper. It was interesting to see if something as, uh, we often think as photographs as restrictive, right? Could we both do our own take on it? So um, in fact, it's something we're exploring more this year. The idea that if you can, if you can, keep to what interests you, you will end up with very different takes there. You can see Paul's on the left. He's interested in all the box-like qualities of everything in the tea store. And it definitely becomes the focus, even though we're drawing from the first fo same photograph and mine is on the right. And I was really interested in the guy pouring the tea and that becomes my focus. So how do we start with something that looks exactly the same and yet keep to what interests us? Um, I, that was a fun session. So actually, if you wanted to do a session like that, it is on Paul's YouTube, the reference images there. And it's kind of nice. People still post their versions of our tea shop, right? On Instagram. Mm, yeah. and share them. All <laughs> right. So now let's get to the playing part. So take it away, Sweeta. Show us the testimonials that you've all sent in. All right. So yes, in fact, I think we've talked a fair bit, Paul and me. Uh, but I, what, one of the things we did actually was we asked you uh, to share your idea, share what you learned from Play Lab this year. So instead of me telling you what play is about, we'll start with, we'll look at sketching Play Lab, we'll start with the word play, which is integral to what we do. And instead of me telling you what play is about, here's some stuff from you. So Catherine shared the idea that said that sketching Play Lab leaves room for everyone to explore and play and like we said many people that come to our sessions are beginners there's everybody in the gamut and we also have uh, instructors and teachers in there and we're glad that even you find it interesting uh, the idea of play and going back to using play in teaching so thank you uh, Catherine for that saying that it, she is now more open and experimental and cares lot less about results and Catherine talks about the idea of harvesting accidental gems which is uh, really a big part of play we don't go in searching for those gems but we play with abandon and then we find our gems and harvest them thank you Catherine for sharing that and your artwork uh, Dory says that besides the many useful tips she received it was also an excuse to play we're glad to be your excuse to make a mess and have fun um, and Doris says uh, it gave her permission to be abstract, uh, which we feel is really, you know, it seems odd uh, compared to what we usually are, which is urban sketchers capturing the reality of what's before us. But I feel abstraction is a great way to sort of break some barriers and then come back, look with fresh eyes at what you're looking at. And the idea of abstraction helps you do many things, as Dory mentions. It helps you not slavishly copy. It helps you simplify. It helps you look at things different ways. So thank you for that, Dory. And Baiba, Baiba often jo joins us at all kinds of times from Europe. And, you know, we've, she's not always, it's always been all kinds of times in the day and night, but thank you for joining us. And Baiba says she's quite demanding of herself and often not happy with the result. But Play Lab has helped her uh, remember to play again and have fun with watercolors. Also, another big part that has happened for many people like Baiba is that they found these little groups within Play Lab. So if you have people you know that you enjoy having in a classroom, uh, Baiba and some other friends have formed a little group. And what they do is after they attend a session, they get together and replay with those ideas. And we think that's a fantastic way to foster some of those things that start as little seeds of ideas and keep playing with them. If you do have such a group or you are playing like this, come back and share with us. We're always excited to see where you took an idea, where you ran with it. Linda says, play is a word that is seldom meant for adults, but all these sessions have been so much fun to play with, to be in. It's like being back in first grade at an art table. You don't know how much of a compliment that is and how much we appreciate that you felt you could go back there with us. Um, 
make a mess. You can see glorious stuff comes out of those sessions. It's so much fun and who knows where it'll go. So thank you for that, Linda. We will share more, but this is Marilyn who says all the sessions have been fun. They are friendly, they are safe, and they are encouraging. And re really all we are doing is fostering that environment. And all of you by responding to what's coming up, the call for playfulness, um, she says, has been especially useful during lockdown. So thanks for that. There were so, so many of you here, some of the artwork that came in. We'll get to a few more of those, but if I don't particularly end up highlighting your artwork or your testimonial, know that Paul and I have them all in a document and we read them and we were actually surprised at all the little things we thought we mentioned in passing or just touched upon one time uh, that you felt made a big impact with you. So thank you for sharing those testimonials. They help us re-remember stuff that we played with, but that's enough about play. I think you're warmed up now. Oh, but Suita, do you, if you have to give us a tip about play, what would that be? Ah, that's right. So for me, play, let's see, when I think about play, and maybe I have a hard time going to play, what I will do is pull out my crayons. For me, crayons has always been, I, I think it's because it was the first wax crayons is probably the first supply I had as a child. So if, if you have to be childlike, if you have to reach play state, think back, what's the first thing you drew with? Maybe it was just pencil, but use something you used a long time ago and when you made art with a bag, or you drew or wrote with abandon. And I feel that sort of supply will help you get to play um, but it's different for everybody Paul you have a tip on how what play means to you yeah I think uh, you know play can be developed and you know can be grown as well so you know you take time be patient uh, you mm -hmm. might be a little playful today hopefully you'll be a little bit more playful tomorrow as well so you know hopefully you'll come back you know uh, you, you also uh, you're more than welcome to join us for a play session and see and i think some of us you can chime in to say uh, you know how playful you have become you know after hanging out with us for a while you know sometimes just playfulness do rock up as well okay so i think enough say, uh, th uh, talk about play shall we play sweet that's right that's right so today we are going silly and crazy so get your supplies out and let me spotlight your desktop poll because yes. what we're going to do is throw each other prompts and you, the prompts are for you too. And this is what you do. The first one is draw a big, we're talking about play. So draw a nice sized bold P on your page. P, okay. I've drawn a P. All right. And so now. So this is our creative somersaults. Yeah. So get ready. Yes, creative somersaults. So a P on your page doesn't have to be huge. And my prompt to you, Paul, is to take that P and yes. turn into a balloon. Oh no, balloon. Okay, so a I'm balloon. So, so you have a pea. You don't get to think about the balloon before you draw your pea. Yeah. So now we want you to respond in two, three minutes. Okay. Yeah. So let's you give everybody a couple us. of minutes. Everybody that pea becomes a balloon. Yeah. So you have to work the pea into that balloon. Okay. Uh, the balloon doesn't have to be round. You can use any material on your table, crayon. So maybe one more minute. All right. Yeah, just another more minute. And then we get to put that little sheet aside. So all move to the next prompt on the same sheet if you want. But this yeah. is your first prompt. Your P becomes P. a balloon. Turn it into a balloon. All right. So we'll give you another 30 seconds. Okay. So we're still on the balloon. Now, if you're not happy with the first balloon because you are still a little sleepy, you can draw another P and turn it into another balloon. Sure. Right. And, and you know, the point of play is that you get looser and crazier. So if your first one is not really loose and crazy, like I'm looking at my desktop, Paul's got a fantastic balloon down there, but mine ended up being quite a, and this happens with me often, the first mm. ones are hard to jump into. So it's Still a pretty standard wow. balloon shaped balloon. Uh, <laughs> and that's okay. But hopefully I will go crazier as okay. I go. Okay. So, All right. So we're putting this one aside. Now, yeah, so that's gonna put that aside. So, so that we're gonna do a few more of this creative summer song. So you All are right. gonna join us, okay? So, right. Suita, can you put a P on your paper? 
-huh. So we shouldn't show them the I'm next prompt. Yeah, I'm I'm down on my desktop. I have. Yeah. So everybody draw a P. Please draw it slightly bigger than the one before. So now this P is slightly bigger. You can change oh, the right. material. Okay, so now they have this P. Sweeta, can you turn the P into a flower or flowers? Into a flower of flowers is my prompt. And do I have three yes. minutes again? Yes, yeah, about three minutes. And the rest of you, please jump in. Creative yeah, summer salt. And, and no cheating. You get to do the P before you know what <laughs> is becoming. So you yeah. get to put P on your page and then it becomes whatever. Um, you can rotate the P. That's you right. Do you anything. can do whatever you want with it. Becomes a flower or a bunch of flowers or whatever. Yeah. And think, uh, listen, a wonderland, you know, thing, the Matt Hatter's party. Yeah, go mad. Go crazy. Be make things out of it. This is probably crazier than what you do in a play session. But we assume that since you've done a year of this, you don't have trouble jumping in and being silly. Yeah. And, you know, if your flower defies gravity, that's fine. <laughs> okay, one more minute. Another minute, all right. Yeah. So some days we play with speed, some days we play, you know, with material. Today we're How definitely are... gonna be pushing you quick through this and a big part of why it's quick, it's not really just for speed. It's to stop thinking too much and wondering if this is too silly, if this is not a good idea, those sort of things, those sort of judgments don't, don't have a place today. It is completely silly. So Okay, so how are I your flowers? My flowers down on my desk, I get to put them aside, right? Yes, yeah, so I think Sweeta is doing very well. I'm going to give her <laughs> one more challenge. And right. I'm going to give all of you the same challenge as well. So Sweeta, can you write another P? But this time write it bigger, right? Even bigger? All right, let me get to... Bigger than the one before, yes. Okay. So the biggest P that's sitting on my page. Here, I got a big P down on my page. All right. Are you all ready with your new P? So this is the third P that we're playing. Okay, Suita, you have to turn the P into an alien pet. Alien pet. All right. If that made no sense to you, look at my desktop. Alien pet. Alien pet. Okay, you go. Three minutes. All right, Let's and go. then do not look at this screen because you want to make your no own No cheating, alien yes. What make is your own alien, alien pet. pet. Yes. It what has is... to be crazy alien. Okay. Um, four eyes, five eyes, two mouth, no problem at all. <laughs> all right, so I have a couple of minutes to end up with an alien pet, whatever that yeah. means to you. Yeah, this pet should be fantastical. So it is a hope that one day we can see you doing this live in front of us so that we can all have a look. I know that would be fun, right? A table full of people making alien pets and throwing them down in the middle. Uh, it, it wow, I like your alien pet. <laughs> I don't know what it is and I don't know how it will move, but we don't have to think right now about how it moves, how it breathes. Mm -hmm. Maybe it wants to say hi. <laughs> but go for it. Make your alien pet. It doesn't have to look anything like anybody's alien pet. And then we will keep going. Paul, I'm going to have to switch back and okay. people look at Look at what Paul's got there. I love his teeth. <laughs> so you see, uh, hopefully, you know, the craziness coming along. So remember, we talk about play, you know, as something that you can develop. And all we're doing is just to roll the ball and then, you know, get you continue to keep the ball rolling. Now, if you'd like to continue to practice this creative summer song, right, we're going to give you two more prompts. You can try them with your piece, okay? And the two more prompts is, can you try maybe turning the pea into a teapot? Since this is a you know tea party, we need a teapot, right? So turn it into a fantastical teapot. And so remember, also, start with a pea. Start with a pea so that you don't yeah. have any structure of a teapot there. And also, you can try making a mythical bird, whatever that is, with 
the P. So you want to make sure that the P is worked into you know your sketch because we want to maybe talk a little bit more about play, right? That's right. So so all these are P for play, and see how you can turn them into all these crazy things. So. Yeah. So okay. for us, you know, when we talk about sketching play lab, it, it's not about the arrival. It's a lot about the process. A lot about you know the now in the moment, you know, what's happening, right, Suita? Mm -hmm. So definitely, yeah, the idea of not so much being somewhere, but the sideways thinking, uh, no must-dos, right? Don't have to do it the way we talk yeah. about it. And if you um, if you have any feedback about this creative summer sorts, okay, we're doing a few more, so this is just a, a, a beginner's level. Please tell us how you feel. You know, um, are you feeling certain emotions? Are you challenged? You know, are you, you know, doing crazy stuff? We love to hear from you as well. Yeah. And those are on YouTube. You can also comment, okay, and uh, join us as well. Yeah, it's always fun to get your state of mind for those of you that have words as you do this. Not all of us do. Like for me, when I start doing this, I, I don't have the capacity to maybe to use words for what I have. But if you do, um, it's lovely to know what people think as they go along. So a couple more teapot and a mythical bird, bird was the other one, mm. right? Yeah. Don't worry and if you don't finish them all. Yeah, don't finish them all. It's all right. If you just want to keep playing and developing the older ones, it's you just have a bunch of little things you're making and then we will get to our tea party eventually. Uh, but also the idea of play, uh, we often talk about the fact that it is all in the journey. At least when you are in play, it's not about where you arrive. It's um, not about the results. Um, the process itself becomes the reward, right? The idea yeah. of being in the mud like this, playing with all your supplies on your table. I I just love it. I, I'm not messy yet which is surprising i better use yeah. my fingers because um, and we also like to say that there's sometimes no uh, obvious step one to ten uh, mm -hmm. we might be meandering like visiting a new country or city we go down the bank alley we turn a corner and then we may encounter something surprising or uh, we find new gems you know like we say in sketching play lab yeah, so, so maybe another, how much more time do we have before we talk about the next? Maybe a couple minutes and then you can keep drawing. I mean, Paul and I will talk about some stuff, but you've got your prompts. You can, I can imagine that if you doodled for 20 minutes, you can yeah. keep developing these for however long. Uh, and we would love you to maybe in, in a few minutes to hold up your first P, piece. Anyone, yeah, us one or on two screen. that you loved. Because yeah. I, I would love in a minute, maybe I'll uh, give us another minute and then I'll, I'll tell you. And if we hold them up, it would be lovely if we could get a few screenshots of the madness on your table, which I wish <laughs> I could see. And if you're like, oh my God, I'm not playful enough, that's okay. Is, uh, if, uh, if you're completely new to PlayLab and have not been in a session before, say a hi in the chat and tell us that because, uh, you know, Paul and I are talking about this like we assume you know what it's about. But hey, we, we always have new friends join us. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's people here that have never been to a play session, but we'd love to say hi. Yeah, And some of you have your camera off if you like to turn it on for a while so that we can all hold up our first key and, you know, we just want to get a feel of, you know, what's going on in the room. Are you still playing? I'm ready to hold up mine. All right. So let me do a quick, so I won't hold mine up just because I need to screenshot. But if everybody yeah. holds up and keep it for a bit, because, you know, I don't know if you are on my screen one, two or three. And if wow. you right up to the screen. Oh, those are fun. I love those alien pets. Yeah, hang on for just a bit. I'm going to screenshot a few of these. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, they're so fantastic cute. to see. And gosh, there are three <laughs> screens full of them. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, know that if you didn't share anything, thank you, I got those. Uh, if you didn't share them but want to share the madness later, you know where, where to find us. We're on Instagram, hashtag sketching play lab. This big madness you make today, however you assemble it, we would love to see it. That's one of the things yeah. we were saddest about. Everybody's making 
a crazy piece on their desktop and how are we gonna see them all? So share them later. Laura is new. Seema says it's her first session. So for anybody that's new, this is how we do our parties, which is just a big crazy mess. Uh, but it's a time for us to be in a room and say hello, quite different from a more structured session where we also play, uh, but it's with prompts. And uh, so a party is just something we have once in a while so we can all meet up and not be getting any prompts or exact instruction from Paul and me. Uh, but welcome, and I hope you come to a session soon. Shall we go all to right. the next yes. part? We are done with our piece, but if people are keeping on playing, that's going to be fine too. But, you know, we talked a lot about play and the idea of play, but it's not all that we talk about in Play Lab. In fact, a big part of what we do is it's called sketching play lab for a purpose. And the reason is play and lab are both important elements of what we do. If we're playing but never really looking at stuff or experimenting with new things, we're going to be playing with the same thing again and again. But we do like the idea of it being a lab. And instead of me talking about lab, here are some of what you had to share about lab. So Terry says, I thoroughly enjoy every play lab session. Sketching to play lab balances guidance with freedom. And the opportunity to step outside any expectations and explore is just delicious. I, I love that you use the word delicious because we do hope that's what it is. It isn't so much that it is rigorous or I must experiment and change one thing at a time, you know, be very exact like you would in a laboratory. It's the idea that it is, you are experimenting, you are in that curious state of mind, but you also enjoy being in that like looking at every what if, what if I smudge this with my fingers? Well, go ahead and do it. Uh, and that's your little experiment. So thank you, Terry, for that. We love that you feel about experimentation like we do. Yasmin says, Sketching Play Lab taught me to enjoy art in a very playful way, while at the same time challenging us to try new and different ways of painting and sketching. So we do like to balance the two, because I think if you think you are just playing with abandon, but at the same time, you are trying things that in a more serious environment, you would freeze up trying um, something outside your comfort zone. Um, so you are in a lab, but when it's combined with play, I think it helps you experiment more easily. Thanks, Yasmin. Um, Radhika, thank you for that. Radhika is herself a facilitator. Like we said, we often have facilitators and instructors uh, come to our labs and um, you wouldn't know you're in a playroom with a whole bunch of people we're just all equals playing playing and making a mess in a room but Radhika's a facilitator and she says that play lab gave her insight into how valuable it is to stumble upon new possibilities via facilitation rather than being taught how to do them and we always hope this is how it comes to you that your aha moments come not from Paul and my work, because that's just two people playing, but from where the prompts take you and the aha happens on your own page. So thanks for that, Radhika. We always try to leave like the gems that appear to be in your page rather than ours. And so, yes, it is really valuable, this idea of finding things yourself. Sharpan joins us quite often from Mexico and says that Sketch and Play Lab pushed him to experiment with art materials, to mix them up, to destroy his artwork and to rebuild it. So that's quite a dramatic process. And we do have some Play Labs where we literally take things apart. Um, and Sharpan feels it's something that also happened in his brain. Uh, and this sort of taking things apart allowed him to explore new creative channels. And he's really grateful for that, German. We are grateful that you came to a play lab and did something as crazy as what I see on the left side of the screen where you took things apart, rebuilt them, uh, made really fun artwork with us. So thank you again for joining us. Carmila talks about the fact that sketching play lab has been an opportunity to try things and learn in a non-judgmental environment. You're encouraged to play and experiment at always the two, the play and the lab, the playing, the making a mess and the experiment. Uh, we like to run them together and we feel that if you feel you're engrossed in one, the other just happens without all the roadblocks that would otherwise come to trying something new. So 
Thank you. I'm glad you feel like we do. Again, lots and lots of work came in. You can see all kinds of crazy stuff. If you're looking at this page of stuff right now and you're saying, and maybe you're newish and you're saying, one sec, what is all that? That is exactly where you end up at the end of a session in Play Lab. No finished pieces, nothing that goes up on the wall, but little gems and little ideas of crazy stuff you didn't think you could do. Um, so sometimes the best part of lab for me is when I look back at my page, I, I don't think that without the madness of us all doing this together, I would have gone there or arrived there. So to be able to surprise yourself without having to do a beautifully finished piece or to make a little discovery, like the two pairs at the bottom of the page are drawn with two hands, a dominant hand and a hand that's almost never used in drawing. Um, is a surprise to the creator. So we're glad that this sort of idea of the lab as we're using it is surprising you and helping you find new stuff. So that's that's wonderful that you shared so many of those. Again, thank you for sharing so, so many testimonials with us. Uh, I think you can speak better for what the year has been uh, than Paul and I can ever describe because we are two sets of ideas and you are, gosh, I don't know, we are 75 of us here and a whole bunch more in on YouTube and a whole bunch yeah. of people for whom it's a crazy time to watch. So they're going to watch and join in later. So thank you for multiplying those ideas and those experiments. All right, Paul, back to you. So um, I hope this uh, lab part is you know, intriguing because often we are probing, we are researching, we are pulling things apart, we are testing, evaluating, and often you'll find that, you know, this creative process comes with failure as well. It's That's part of right. that learning process as well. Not everything, you know, goes right, but we do uh, also cherish those, more, those learning moments as well. Now we are going to up the fun level and do another round of creative summer salts. All right, All so right. are you ready? Sure. So we are moving to the lab a bit of this, right? We've done yeah. P for play. Let me go down to my desktop, Paul, because okay. I think it's time for you to throw me a prompt, maybe. Okay. So let's go to Sweden's uh, uh, table. You can also follow us. So we like you to write, okay, the alphabet L, but this time maybe make it a wireframe. So what do we mean? So show it. Sweden will show you. All right, so L you said, but you don't L. have to, as Paul said, it doesn't have to be only a solid letter. So maybe it's a big, let me get darker with this. This color is not doing it for me. So maybe it's a big wireframe L. All yeah. right. I and have you can it. rotate it ever so slightly. So yeah, do what room, you are you ready with your L? Okay, so my prompt is going to come out soon. So we can you turn the L into, since we are throwing you a party, we need ice cream. Let's go. All right, ice so that cream. L becomes ice cream. So go for it, everyone. Yes, and you know draw your... Since it's fantastical, and since you don't have to stop at one flavor, and since you don't even have to have real flavors, it is whatever you imagine your ice what cream. What are you imagining? Is. Is. Oh gosh, I don't know, but I've never had a blue ice cream. So mine is going to get blue. Oh, okay. So it's not like some onion garlic uh, ice oh, cream. Gosh. No, no, no. I live close to Gilroy, the garlic capital of the world. And they do have a garlic ice cream every yeah. year. The Gilroy Garlic Festival. So... This is my Be generous with your icing, you know. Yes, all let it drip, toppings. let it melt, let it make a mess. And your L becomes an ice cream. It can be in a cone or a cup, doesn't matter. All right, what would be the most delicious flavor ice cream that you can? So another couple of minutes, that is L. So Hopefully you are now starting to get a hang of letting your hair down, just going with your instinct, you know, doing the crazy stuff without judgment. Wow, yours looks delicious. You it looks cherry. like a mess, but why not, right? On a warm summer day. 
Yeah, uh, that's right. Summer's coming. Oh. Uh, summer's coming soon. Okay, maybe 30 more seconds. I hope you have yeah. your crazy ice cream ready. Let's look at what you have. Oh, look at that. Oh, you have a cup full of all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I think it's some avocado, you know, celery flavor ice cream. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. By the way, for those of you that follow Paul on Instagram, in his stories will often appear the most fantastical food. I always want to jump on a plane and go to Singapore and eat yes, some of Yes, please come. Okay, so um, I'm going to play the next round. So All right. you're just going to give me a Great. Box. So another L on your page. This time bigger, right? Yeah, every time you go bigger. So it is another L on your page. Okay. And this L becomes a party hat. Oh, of course. We do need a party hat. Yeah, so you have an L and you get to turn it into a party hat. Oh It'd be nice to have music in the background, isn't it? Like Mission Impossible. Oh, except I think we wouldn't hear each other. So hopefully, mm -hmm. everybody that we asked to stay on mute is playing their party music in their background. Oh, yeah. If you feel like, you know, dancing around your page, why not? Okay. So party hat is what you're going for. Yeah, party hat. And it can be really tall, really big, really wow. How much more time do I have? Another minute. Okay. And then, and it's not like anybody needs to be done. You find a prompt you love and keep want to keep following it. Go for it completely. But Paul, you, I'm only giving you another minute because I want to okay. throw another prompt. <laughs> Because why yeah. stop at party hat, right? We don't have everything we need for this party yet. Yes. All right, so hopefully okay. you have some things down on your page. All right, so you got a party hat and you're yes, almost, you got a nice party hat. almost set for the party, but I need another L on your page. Okay, what does that show me that last one? All right, so you have another let L. Me just, yeah, let me just write down. Okay, bigger still, yeah? Yeah, let's go bigger. Let's okay, go. what's it? really big and what is a party without a cake so this time you get to make that into a birthday cake for sketching play lab uh, birthday cake for sketching play lab yeah it's got and candles. this is your chance to imagine whatever cake you wanted it can have endless layers you don't have to be stuck with one flavor you can have all the toppings you wanted and all the decoration you wanted so go for it. A cake, a birthday cake for sketching play lab. Okay, okay. yeah. Candles, icing, all Candles, the works. Icing, all the works, yes. And it's over the top. Over the top is always good. Yeah, I can imagine the flavor, the, the crunch, the texture. Mm -hmm. I can never choose. So I think I'm going to get all sorts of layers in here with all the stuff I want. So what's your favorite um, cake? Oh, gosh, it depends on the season. If it's hot, then I yeah. want a strawberry cake Oh yes. or a lemon cake. Yeah, that meant good. Yeah, What's all, all, all sorts of things on your page. Black forest, black forest. Black forest? Chocolate, yeah, black forest with lots oh. of chocolate and you know, <laughs> cherries. Yeah, tell us your favorite flavor if you, if you want to type it there. 
so that I yeah. can be inspired by you as so well. So Paul can go out next week to a cafe and find and eat your favorite flavor. And maybe he'll even draw it because he often draws his cake. Yeah. With it. yeah. Yeah. If it's a blue cake, that's fine too. Yeah. Anything goes. How's your cake? Show us your cake. My cake? is appearing here it's multi-layered and um at this point i cannot say i know what flavors are in there oh. but it's it's happening all right so you must be wondering where are we going with this? We will tell you very shortly. But if you want to continue to do more um, somersaults, okay, we're going to give you two more props. Couple so more. Let me go down to your desktop, Paul. You want to tell them two more prompts to yeah. play with? <clears throat> you can continue to finish up your first three or if you want to do more mental somersault, turn the... Uh, L into a teacup. Obviously, we have uh, a tea party. We need teacups, right? And also, the last one you notice, I put down question marks. You can turn. You can bring us a party item you think that's missing so far. Maybe it's a plate of cookies, or it could be uh, something that the streamers, you know, some decoration mm -hmm. that you think we will need to make the party more exciting. So go ahead and create a few more because Sweeter has you know one more thing to share with us about lab about experimentation sure. so, so make more stuff just things like and it can be abstract too it can be ideas of what you could bring to a party so talking a little bit about lab while you're doing this uh, if when you do you know often you feel quite uncomfortable about doing new stuff uh, hopefully the idea of play gets you there um, but I feel that sometimes there is the idea that because this comes out of Paul's and my sketchbooks and because when we come to a play lab we sort of lead the session and do the prompts uh, that everything is something we always do and are comfortable with uh, but that's not true so I want to share a little bit about a particular session that uh, is, is has become one of my favorite sessions but I have to admit Break and build and the idea of going abstract is not something that is usually part of my repertoire. So um, it's something that I saw in Paul's sketchbooks and we'll often pull things out of one or the other sketchbook and we'll build a session out of them. But the idea of abstraction doesn't come easy to me. So when we first played, actually, I had these photographs from an early session. That's just a pair we drew. And then the idea was to cut it up and assemble it unpair like and you can see in version two and version three I just couldn't let go of the idea of the pair being pear shaped and the stem of the pear being in the top of my page and however many times I made a pair and cut it up it, it appeared quite pear like in the end and if that's where you often are with a play session where it just doesn't get as crazy as we're prompting you to do uh, it takes time. A play session is one time and sometimes you only attend one. Uh, but keep playing with the ideas. They do eventually get somewhere and sometimes they take forever. I mean, I've, I, I don't even consciously do this, but over time, it's been easier for me to take a piece and be able to abstract that um, or to uh, take a life drawing and cut it up and make it into new poses. So it does get easier over time. And sometimes it, of course, goes crazy where you don't know where you ended up. I wish I had the middle stages to these, but what this was, I, I don't seem to be able to find them right now, is a life drawing that got cut up and reassembled or reimagined as a landscape. So it takes time. It was a long journey from the pair that just could not be an unpair to the life drawing that became a landscape. Uh, I do enjoy this kind of crazy stuff and cutting up stuff. It's also a fantastic thing for me to do with the pages and pages of life drawing that lie around my studio at the end of a practice session and have nowhere to go. So take an old artwork, cut it up, try to forget what it is and see something new in it. It's a really liberating experiment, but not maybe not liberating at the very start. Maybe it takes a long time to get there and that's okay too. So I just wanted to share that one because I wanna share that sometimes 
the first time you do something or the fifth time you do something might still be baby steps. It doesn't get all the way in one shot. So be willing to do that. Because, you know, even when I was doing those first pairs, that was so frustrating to me because uh, they were not they were not becoming something really quick. They were not unbecoming pairs quickly. It was still fun to do it. So stick with it. It might be fun. But with that, I think you have a whole bunch of party stuff on your desk. Yeah. And Paul's going to tell us what happens with that next. So uh, if Sita can show my table. So what you're going to do is that uh, we have now all the items lying around. We've got all the balloons, the flowers. So what you're going to do is pick up your scissors and Cut up your party items. That's okay. right. We didn't so, we didn't talk about cutting up for no reason at yeah, all. I didn't ask right. you to bring loose paper for no good reason at all. Yeah. Go cut them up. So I'm going to just uh, show you what uh, you can do. I'll just cut up three. You can cut up the rest. Just a few, you know, Paul, small. and then I'll go to my desktop and show them what we did when we did a play. We did a little yeah. trial run of this. So just cut up two or three of your favorites. And then you can keep adding and cutting new ones. But to start with, because you can have a zillion things on your desk. So cut, up, cut up my uh, alien pads, my balloon and my flower. And now we can start to do a bit of, you know, reimagining. Okay. Uh, you can start to organize your party. Like, you know, how you were to a party. Do you want, you know, the cake to be in the middle, balloons. And what you can do is also turn the flower into a cake if you want to. So for example, you know, I can stick this down. Okay, and I can draw over it, all right, and turn the balloon and the cake, uh, turn the balloon and the flower into a cake, you know, why not, you know, so that you can start to, you know, really go wild and crazy. I'll show you my page and this reader can show you uh, what we uh -huh. played earlier. Okay, so let me find my, yes, this is the one, you probably saw it, you know, during our uh, advertisement for this uh, block party. You can see how I've got my cakes, Got my party hat. We just want you to, you know, uh, create a page full of, you know, party ideas uh, to help us celebrate our anniversary, all right, together. So everything goes. If I grab a tea. Goes, yes. Yeah. Let's see Sweeter's uh, party sure. page. Sure. So let me go down to my, what I'm doing right now first, which is right now I'm just starting to cut up a few pieces. And today I worked on all kinds of colored paper. So it might be whatever, but Paul and I did this little session before, and then we cut up and assembled and it can become anything with added drawing. So that the little cake that assembled there, my ice cream became a cupcake eventually because I couldn't <laughs> have enough cake. Uh, the little flowers are there. The party hat got a person. And so, so bring things together, but also feel free to cut across them. Like you don't have to use an item as is if you have your oh, flowers. And you know, one of the nicest ways to reimagine something is to go ahead and cut it up. And once you cut it up, it doesn't exist in its full form anymore. So we're going to use the next bit to really just play, get your glue, reassemble, but always feel free to keep adding, to throw out, to reimagine any bit of this. And again, if you have any comments, you know, uh, how are you feeling so far? Any ideas? Uh, feel free to share with us. Right. Yeah, and again, you know, it's not going to be done. There is no done. Uh, we'll take it. We'll take it. How long should we spend just doing this before we look Maybe at another um, five to eight minutes? Because yeah, we do want to get the ball rolling and we want to also tell you about, you know, what's next. And then we can you know, close the party by showing, you know, our party page. Yeah. So if your desk is looking as crowded and mad as mine uh you're playing so yeah, how's everybody it. feeling <laughs> lovely i see smiles i wish wish we could i i, I want to turn some sound on except we might drive some of you batty if all all of us in one room were talking together so We'll look up, we'll see smiling faces, we'll scroll through our scene, screens and see you all. And for all of you that I can't see right now, but I know are joining us on YouTube and playing with us, thank you for joining in. 
it's fun to know that we are virtually in a really big room and that so many of you have done this year with us. And I think we also have a few friends um, who gave us testimony and also you're in the room itself. Yes, thank you for sharing those, whether we got to share yours or no. Uh, it was, a, Paul and I looked at them all together. We have them in one document and it is fantastic to see the breadth yeah. of what you have. So I think uh, we can invite some of you to those who, you know, submitted your testimony to also, you know, say hi. I think I see Baiba. Baiba, you want to unmute yourself and say hi and say maybe one or two words about Sketching Play Lab. Yes, how it's been to do this because you had, yeah, sure, go ahead. Hi. That, as, as I told, it is just fantastic, uh, something fantastic that happened last year, because, um, yes, as I wrote, I have, uh, I have such feeling that I have a new art family now. <laughs> that, yeah. That's amazing. Know. And that's, that's a great, I, I, I love that you shared that, because maybe some of our other Friends haven't thought of that because Paul and I can only run 75 sessions a year, right? We're not going to come back and play with you, but you do have the energy to do more and make little groups. And, and the point of this is to keep playing with it. So bye bye. I'm glad you found art friends to do this with. And I'm, I'm imagining they're from all parts of the world. Yes, yes. Helena That's is from, from France and, and Katie and Dottie is from USA. And tell and, us where, um, you're, where you're joining us from, Baiba. I'm from Latvia. That's right. So everywhere. And that's been one of the loveliest things. Thank you, everyone, for joining us from different parts of the world. I'd love nice. to visit you in Latvia yes. very soon. One day, yes. one day. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yay. We are waiting. Yes, thank you, thank Baiba. You I think I see... Helena in the room as well. Helena, you want to say... Hi, it's a few words. Oh, hi there. You you both know, I oh. hope the other ones as well, how much I appreciate Sketching Play Lab. Um, I think it's um, the best way to boost our creativity uh, with the Play Labs, with the, to continue to play and to, and we also need, uh, like, um, I remember your podcast, for those who haven't listened to the podcast that uh, the Sneaky Artists had with uh, Paul, uh, I think you talked about that we need roots and wings, and, yes. we, and the wings is the play, and I think that's a very important part, and I think that it goes in waves with play and learn, that's my thing, but uh, if we lose the play, I think we lose uh, our creativity somehow. Just uh, so thank you know how, both how thankful I I'm bothering you both with so many That's emails okay. and PMs. But thank no, you. No, it's lovely. I'm, the point the point is to start something here yeah. and to have all of you keep it going. So yeah. thank you for yeah. that. So and we have Sana in the room. Sana, you want to say hi? Hey guys. Um, I just want to say how much I appreciate how you push every single one of us out of the box <laughs> and beyond the box, mm -hmm. always, and I love it. And Sana, um, I, I don't know if you, uh, maybe you will remember this well, but I was really touched when I knew you joined us, I believe in a session uh, yeah. during when the forest fires were very close to home. And I, yeah, I was refugee from the wildfires here in the Santa Cruz mountains and yeah. having you guys just knowing I'm going to do this play session. It just lifted up a lot of the stress I was in. So thank, thank you for, you for that. that. It, it's pretty incredible mm -hmm. that we, we sometimes, I mean, to us, it's just a play session, but when people yeah. like you join and say that it does that for you and it's able to, you know, through crazy stuff, you're able to play. Um, it really speaks to the power of what um, playing like this or creativity brings. So thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, guys. It's powerful. Thank you. Keep going. Thank really? you. Thank you for playing with us. Uh, how about Susan Nolling? You're in the room. You want to say hi? Hi. How are you guys? This, this is fabulous. <laughs> How's I, uh, the creative somersaults? Have you been spinning around? 
I've been spinning around and dropping things and cutting things. And <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a struggle keeping up with the two of you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, don't worry. You have your prompts, and you have forever. I mean, we'll stay in the in the in session here for a bit more, but you don't have to have anything finished. So we we we'll like to see it later, though. Oh, but it's so much fun to play with it, and you do push me in new directions. I do appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And you Thank know, that's two ways. I mean. Um, for, for every time we have something like this, which is totally nutty, uh, the idea that you are willing to do it is very much part of the process but, because it would be nothing for us to invent a mad solution if you weren't willing to be crazy with us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think a lot of you have thoughts, so feel free to continue to you know keep them coming either on Instagram or you know you can type in the chat box. So I'm just going to pull out. Um... Oh, it's Marilyn's birthday, and Marilyn was in our. I don't see Marilyn. Is Marilyn gone? Marilyn, if you're here, oh, I see you here. Hey, I'm, I'm still here. here. I'm cleaning up. You're cleaning up. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Marilyn. Uh, Thank that you. Was my, my, my that was your birthday just, on uh... our birthday. My husband just bought boat tickets and then, uh, you know, uh, sort of kidnapped me to my favorite island in the North Sea. And I could just grab a few art supplies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go for it, go for it. Enjoy. But uh, now food is served, so I have to clean the table and I have to go. <laughs> go, go, go. Yay. Happy so, bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. So we are going to now share with you um, what's next um, for me i'm you know like you always hear me say for your curiosity so for me i'm you know looking into how i can continue to play with new materials you know like uh, acrylic that i've picked up recently and also you must have also seen how me and sweeter we've been uh, also exploring um, floral sketching and mm -hmm. painting flowers over and over again yes we are incubating ideas uh, we're not sure how long you know we need uh, to bake the cake but you know be patient with us uh, I think it is uh, coming out quite nicely uh, so what are you curious about Suida so far oh, oh gosh lots of stuff in fact like texture and texture play has been a lot of even in florals uh, what I'm playing with so yeah the, these curiosity things we have Paul and I play separately so play lab is not all we do but a lot of things that we get passionate about we bring it back to see if we can come together in a play lab session and do this so florals is a little bit different right we are hoping to yeah. incubate something bigger than a regular session out of it we don't know how long it'll take because it's always baby steps and um paul i think it's also like every time we think we're going down a path then we diverge yeah. so it becomes bigger and bigger so one day uh, yeah we have we chase some after something new, you know, then we come back to this again, you know. Yeah, so that's part We might have done thing. six, seven, eight floral sessions together yeah. so far, and who knows where they've gone. They've gone all sorts yeah. of places. So we do encourage you to follow your curiosity as well. Um, so what's next, you might be asking. Uh, so for us, we are thinking about, you know, play session clinics because a lot okay. of us have Very questions. Very quickly, Paul, before you go there, some people have asked if we will keep our play lab and this form running we may not do 75 this following year but we will keep the play lab running in some form and know that part of why it runs is because all of you even though we've kept it donation based you've been super generous so going into year two it is still nice that you contribute so we will keep play lab running but Paul wants to also give you a sneak peek into like sort of yeah. avenues we are expanding into so yeah. thanks Paul so yep. um, clinics are after play sessions where, you know, we create an opportunity for you to ask questions, to practice. So we have, you know, a 75, 90 minutes class where we all will sketch and paint the same, you know, photo reference or a similar object so that we can uh, take the same steps, you know, and play with a common, uh, the, uh, common photo reference or object. And this is where also you get an opportunity to uh, recap, review the ideas that we shared with you. Uh, during the clinic, you also get to practice, like I mentioned earlier. 
so it is very intense practice together in the room and also an opportunity for you to ask extensive questions which sometimes may not happen because during the play session itself we are caught up with the playing so this so it's actually it's it follows a a, a lab right a lab yeah. which we do uh, in fact we'll we'll do it this time uh, after we yeah. do our next session we'll be following it with two other sessions that you can enroll in called clinics yeah. where we'll take the, take the principles of a session and apply them together to a piece it's experimental i think it'll be useful paul it's a little bit like what happened when we did the tea uh, the tea stall sketching together yes. right yes correct. we worked from one reference and it gave us something to explore together but see how many ways we could do it so yeah. yeah, so look out for the clinics, all right? So we do encourage you to come for the play session first and then join us for the cleaning That's after right. as well. Uh, we are also uh, thinking about extended mega play sessions where we mesh up two or three um, play sessions together and come up with new hybrids as well. So it'd be longer, crazier. Hopefully, you know, it's it sounds uh, fun, all right? So this is still- Yeah, right works. now we're playing with those ideas of taking what if we string together A, B, and C? Where do yeah. we go? So we're playing with that idea of long play sessions and they might be more, uh, we'll figure whether they'll be donation based or they'll be more, you know, structured, but it's it's a work in progress. So play sessions yeah. that join things together. And we, also, yes. Yes, we are definitely talking about, you know, workshops when things open up uh, and online and in person. So when we talk about workshop, it is more formal so we do have teaching elements uh, we also have practice elements and also we have a question and answer it'll be smaller groups uh, so that you know we can attend to you uh, and answer your questions during those uh, workshops and retreats are fun because again you get to spend extended time with us so you know we are looking forward to this so those are still uh, work in progress uh, we really need to just monitor the situation and news and see how we can move along. Anything from you, Suita, about workshops? No, uh, it's about, well, especially on workshops, it's such a long-term process for us. We don't think we'll be doing anything this summer or anytime soon, but it's always something to think about. So, you know, a workshop or, or say a retreat uh, to Paul and me would be something where we can find a physical common place, yeah. maybe be in with people for maybe a weekend, maybe longer, and really immerse ourselves in session after session of being in this one mindset. If yeah. you have and ideas, if you know of locations, if you yeah. are the kind that loves planning and finding stuff, because Paul and I love the creative side of this, but we're always looking for somebody who can help set up stuff, message yeah. us. So oh, if you have a, an idea where you want to collaborate with us, you know, do... Um, jump in and you'll have a word with us so you can reach us at sketching playlab uh, as playlab at gmail.com so this is where you can you know join our mailing list if you are not on it you can also get regular uh, updates about our play session as well definitely follow us on instagram hashtag sketching playlab where you get you know a lot of regular uh, posting sharing of the play sessions the experiment after as well and last and foremost, we really want to uh, thank you for your support so far through donation. And if you'd like to continue to support us, you know, you can follow those links, uh, buymeacoffee.com, you know, backslash Suita or backslash Paul. Eh? And then you can just buy us one or two cups of coffee uh, to help us, you know, with our uh, initiative as well and to keep the sketching play lab uh, open. Anything to add, Suita? No, I think that sort of is a good place to wrap it up because, uh, yes, we have ideas for the future, but like everything in Play Lab, we're open to ideas from you. Who knows what a little morph into and become? We never know. I mean, these are very at the start of where we're starting to think of bigger things. We will keep Play Lab in this form where we have sessions on donation basis running because not everybody is going to be able to make it somewhere with us but understand that it will be i mean we're really grateful you are supporting us you have helped run this like it's a workshop and that's what's done most of that's why we could put in the time for 75 sessions and hopefully um it meant a lot to you and brought something to you but we have we are we are who knows where we'll take this but we will keep it running because we've all found it super valuable 
thank you so, so much for your support and for playing with us. Again, nobody thinks these are going to be done right now, but if you made a mad mess and made something crazy, do share with us on Instagram. It's hashtag sketching play lab, tag Paul and me. I see a lot of people holding up stuff. So give me a quick moment. Paul, you yeah, had anything so to say before I spotlight and, and uh, like screenshot the room? Yeah, so hold up your um, party page. Yeah, so we really want to see the... Oh, wow. Thank you for celebrating. so fun. So let me do a quick screenshotting of everything I can because what I will do at the end of this, I will try and send you all a mail. It may not be today, but we'll send a message soon with the link to where the recording of this is. And then just hold it up another second because I have a couple of, of you to go around. And then I'll send these screenshots too. So thank you so, so very much. I got those. Thank you so much. Anybody had anything? Shall we, shall we do a quick? Did you have anything to say in chat or a quick mute, unmute and share what it was like? Anyone has any comments for us before we go? Yeah, you can type in the chat box. You can unmute yourself. We'll yeah, it's to... fine if we get a bit of a chaos right now. Thank you and happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, happy Thank birthday, you. Sketching Play Lab. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for a long time. <laughs> it's so been fantastic. Thank you for joining us for Thank a whole you. year. Thank you. Thank I'm you. looking forward to another year with you. <laughs> <laughs> stay too. well. Oh. Yeah, stay well. Stay well, everyone. Let's keep doing this while not everybody's out of lockdown yet. So we will we will keep running these. And uh, you should see something in your mailbox very soon uh, from us about the very next session, which is starting two weeks from now, right, Paul? Yes, that's correct. All right. So we're going to say goodbye just now, but keep playing. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Share your sketches with us. So have a wonderful day. Happy birthday. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.